But I wanted to wrap up the 10-day art bookmark making challenge and do a few uh, bookmarks live. So uh, I'm very happy that everybody who participated in the 10-day bookmark making challenge, I'm going to link up the playlist below in case you guys want to participate and uh, also share your work in the event page as well. So without further ado, I'll just flip the screen and we can get started. So I'm going to pull up the video on my uh, computer to see if I can see all the stuff on the table. And if you guys are hopping on, you can say hello. Like I said, it's very rare I do live streams on this channel, but I wanted to wrap up the bookmark making challenge. Sometimes I do an extra day and today I, I thought, oh, I'll, instead of doing an extra day, I'll just do it live. Much easier. So there we go. And if you're hopping on, say hello. Just turn off the sound. Okay, so now I can see my screen and I can see that I'm not very well on my screen. So where's my hand? There's my hand. So I want to maybe bring the camera over a little bit and bring it out a little bit so we can see what we're doing here. Okay, let me bring this out a little bit more. That's better. And I'm just going to adjust this a, a bit so it's flat. Uh, and we should be able to get going. So this is my watercolor paper. I'm going to just start by setting up my board. So this is hot press paper. And the difference between the hot press and the cold press, I'm going to show you. So this is the cold press paper. And this comes in a uh, pad. Uh, these sheets I buy in large sheets and I cut them up. So this is, the, you'll see the texture. This one's not too bad. The texture is a little rougher, but this one is definitely smoother, the hot press. So I'm going to just cut it on somewhere where the varnish was peeling off. I got little bits on it. So what I like to do with this is I actually fold it. And instead of cutting this paper, because I really like the look, of the scalloped edges. So what I do for this is I just crease it. So I'll cut it and crease it. And then I tear it. I just find it has a nice look. And then when I make cards, it makes a nice little border. So you just go like that and you tear it. And then I could do a whole sheet with a bunch of abstract stuff, which I will do. I'll do it with the hot, with the cold press I want to show you the difference. And then this one, I'm gonna to wanna to cut into bookmark size pieces. So I'm not necessarily gonna measure this because they don't have to fit in the sleeves, but I do want them to be uh, more vertical. So we're gonna do it this way. We're gonna cut them more vertical. So I just crease it back and forth. I could have prepped this in advance, but you know, that's my point of doing the live stream was so I wouldn't have to prep and film. So we're just going to do it live. If you want to skip through in fast speed, you can definitely do this. Now, you could do different sizes. We could fold it in half. Usually I go with, you know, just how it ends up working out with regards to um, uh, just how, uh, how do you say, just I don't measure it. I just fold, 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 and then I get whatever sizes happen. So this actually works really well. It makes a nice bookmark size. I hadn't planned that, but it looks pretty good. So what I can do for this, it's it's a little harder to tear when you get uh, small into the smaller pieces. So we're going to start it off with a little tear and then just carefully bring it down here. So we've got that one. And why not just set up all four of them because why not? We'll, we'll get those set up. And then I'm going to tape them down on my board. So these are things I've shown previously in other tutorials and other live streams. And like I said, we just finished the 10 day art bookmark making challenge. I'll show you some of those bookmarks uh, from the challenge as well, in case you want to participate and make some. And I'm putting together a slideshow this weekend of people's work. So if you have time to make a few and want your work to be in the slideshow, let me know. Whoops, it's February 2nd if you're watching the replay. So now we get a, this board, Masonite, and 
I tape down my bookmarks. So we're just gonna tape these down. I probably should have put my screen a little higher, but this way you'll be able to see quite a bit of detail. So I just take this and tape these down. And then what that does is it prevents the paper from uh, tearing and it also makes a nice border on the bookmarks. I'm gonna put the scalp end at the bottom. Hi Mirta, how are you? You're the first one on. I decided to do an improvised live stream Mirta because I usually do a bonus video for my challenges and I didn't have time to do one. So I thought, well, why don't I just go live and do some extra bookmarks? So this, these bookmarks are gonna be watercolor and I've actually torn the paper to make a nice little scalloped edge. And I'm just gonna set them up with the tape so we can paint them. So these are going to be, and then when you remove the tape, they're gonna have a nice border on them. So that's cool. And you're here, yay! You're the first one here. I just announced it in the Facebook group. So we'll see if anybody comes. And Mirta, have you been able to make any bookmarks? Let me know. I would love to see pictures because I am gonna put this slideshow to get together this weekend. But if you need a little more time, let me know because I don't have to do it right away. I can wait another week, it's not a big deal. So let's just tape these up. I'm trying to make the borders somewhat even. I'm not gonna to worry too much if they're not totally even. And then this one, we're gonna do this. I'm thinking I probably should have put my easel higher. Next time I'm gonna put the easel, maybe, or not the easel, the tripod a little bit higher, but that's okay. So now we're gonna tape across this edge. We just want, and sometimes I put more of a border on the bottom because it's, it just, then you can sign the bottom because these are art bookmarks. So you definitely want to sign them. I actually didn't sign any of my ones that I did in the challenge, but those were more samples. So here's our setup for the watercolor. So that's good. And then what I'm going to do now is put this over here. I want to just make sure that you guys can see the whole, yeah, you can see the whole thing. So now I'm going to show you some of the bookmarks from the other challenge. So if people want to finish number B, number B, is that an eight? Okay, my eyesight's terrible. So for people that want to do the bookmarks, I'm gonna just give you a, a quick overview of what we did so that um, I should probably do these in order. I don't have them in order. Uh, I could do them in order probably, let me just see. Here, this was day one, which was silhouettes. So let me just find the silhouettes. There's, everything's mixed up here in my, in my stuff. So I think I'm not good. Oh, here's another silhouette one. Yeah, so those were really nice, the silhouettes. Let me just see some of these other ones. Here's another silhouette one and the silhouette. So this is day one, was the silhouettes. Let me bring these over so you can see them. If I bring them right to the edge, okay. There you'll see them better. So these are, this is day one with the silhouettes. I'm going to link up all the videos below. This, I think, was day two, was the botanicals. Okay, so that's the botanicals. That was day two. And then we had the, this one was really nice with the letters, the illuminated letters. Those ones are really nice. Illuminated letters. Okay. And... I'm not sure I'm putting these in the right order, but you see more or less. These are the abstract ones. Some of them we cut old paintings to do those. So those are cool, abstract. This one is paint pouring. Okay, put those in there. And then this was collage. So these are really nice collage. I did some figure drawing. So those are really pretty, the collage ones. And then we did, these which were really fun. So these are fold, fold over bookmarks that just fold over and go in the book. Cause she had a little ear earring and then this folds over. So that was another challenge. And then we have the Chinese brush painting, which is super fun. It says live, love, laugh. And we have the coloring pages bookmarks, 
And there is a printable PDF if you wanna print these out and color them yourself, or you could create your own. So there's that. And then, oh, this was an, a corner bookmark. That was fun. That was another day. And then we have the geometric one with the dangling thingy. Oh, and I've taught you guys how to make tassels in one of them as well. So that's that. If you guys wanna check out the playlist, go for it. And then what we're going to do now is I want to do some kind of abstract things on here, but the other thing I wanna do is I'm gonna put these little ones at the side and I'm going to do a big one. So let's bring this over. These, this is the card size I usually do. When I make cards, I usually do them that size for the greeting cards. And that is, I'm gonna put this one here. I might as well just use this piece. I've already I've already cut it. So we're gonna tape this one down so it doesn't get too um, wrinkly. So we're gonna take that tape that one down like that. And maybe I could do it this way and you'll probably be able to see it better. So if we're gonna do it this way, I, like I said, I probably should have put my easel, my uh, tripod up a little more, but that's okay. And you guys are like, when are you going to paint? <laughs> You're just setting up your stuff. Well, that's just takes time. That's why I'm doing this live because it saves me time. Sorry, guys. So now paints. I have these beautiful Stuart Semple paints that I love. I love these paints because they're, they're actually unique colors that this artist Stuart Semple invented. And he gave names to all the colors. These are his unique colors. Of course, my favorite color is Butt Nugget. But there's also some other fun one, like Bowie, I guess like David Bowie, Jealous, 1980. There's some super fun uh, colors there. So uh, I'll link up where you can buy this palette and all my art supplies in my Amazon affiliate shop. And this is my other nice messy palette. So this is my traditional palette with all my traditional colors. So I will put that one at the side. And I have my brushes. Oh, I have this if I want to go in with a calligraphy pen after. Let's put that at the side. Let's not confuse ourselves. And bucket of water. And paper towel. Move this over here. And also okay, saran wrap, which is what I like to use for abstract stuff. I'm going to put that at the side. I have a heat a gun that I'm going to use to dry this a little bit because this what I'm doing today I want I'm going to require it to dry a little bit so let's put that at the side uh, salt I have coarser salt and table salt useful and alcohol why do we need alcohol you ask well you're gonna see we're gonna make some bubbles so let's put that at the side I'm gonna get some water have a little sip and we're just going to do a bunch of abstract stuff. And I'm realizing I probably should have had a bigger brush. This one's very, very tiny. But you know what? I just happen to have this Chinese brush here that maybe I can use that. This is what I use for the Chinese brush stroke painting. But I might just use that because I need a lot of paint on there. Trouble with this one. It looks like the bristles are coming out, but that's okay. Because we want to, what I want to do, and I'm going to prep everything in advance. You guys have seen me do this before. I want to do like really abstracty things. And what I'm thinking to do, I'm going to, I was going to separate the colors, but it doesn't really matter if they're going to blend. I want to do two contrasting colors because I have an idea. I'm not going to tell you yet because I don't know if it's going to work. So now we're going to get some plastic saran wrap. So this is one of Amber's favorite techniques. Uh, to do abstract stuff with the plastic. So we're going to do that. And then now I'm just going to, I think I'm gonna maybe use my other colors for this. So I'm gonna put Stuart at the side. I'm gonna use my traditional colors here. Sadly, we really can't see much, can we? So let's bring the palette over here so at least you can see a little bit what I have here. There you go. So you can see those a little bit. My water's at the side, got my brushes, and first I'm gonna wet my, wet my brush, which you can't see, sadly. 
And I don't know if I could put this easel up a little bit. I'm gonna put it up a little bit. Sorry if you're gonna get seasick, but I really feel like I need to put it up a little bit. So just, just close your eyes if you're getting seasick. And I'm gonna put my easel up, or my tripod up a little bit. Because it's too low. So there we go. Hopefully that's gonna be even. And then the last one. There we go. Tell me if this is better. And let's see how it looks. Oh yeah, that's better. Okay. Much better. Because I found that before, it just was not, you couldn't see much. So there we go. So now you can see what we're doing. Hey, okay, cool. So now we have this paper towel, we have plastic, we have that, we have the alcohol. So the alcohol I'm gonna put in a little jar, 70%, don't use the 50%, it does not work. So I'm gonna do that. I actually have to buy some more today. So we've got that and let's go for it people. So now this is paint. So now we're going to get our, Mirta, are you sleeping? So there we go. We're gonna get our brush and we're gonna start by wetting some of our paints. So I'm just gonna go in. This one over here is my favorite color. It's called Payne's Gray. I love that one. I also love this magenta type color. I forget what it's called. It's probably got a fancy red name. And then I'm just gonna wet all of these guys. I like working with the dry um, watercolors. What I do is I buy the tubes, I put them in a palette and I let them dry. And I just, um, I don't like working out of the tube. This is the, a better way to work. It just, you don't waste so much paint either. So there we go. So we're just gonna wet these guys. I'm running out of blues. I really need some more blues. So now I am going to just paint. So all we're doing guys is like super abstract stuff. So I wanna do, use my Saran Wrap to make a kind of a, like a, a pattern type of thing. So on one side, I'm gonna stick with the blues and then on the other side, I'm gonna do a contrasting color. So we're just going to go ahead and do a bunch of colors and go over here. Um, I really, I'm getting them a little too watery, I can see already. So I'm gonna to have to, this is very, you know, how do I say, it's very, um, Precise. It can be very precise how much water you need. So if you put too much water, these effects aren't going to work so well. So I'm slightly worried I put a little too much water. So I'm going to try not to put too much water in here. I've already put like a little too much. And I'm trying not to blend them too much. I'm trying to just do like little blobbies around here. I'm going to use that to dry that a little bit. And I just want to do these colors where's my purple oh there oh, i didn't even get the purple that's what i want i want yeah i just want to really go in here and slap on a bunch of color and you're going to see why so we're just going to fill in all the space i don't want any red uh space or um white space so much so i'm just going around here i'm going to get a little more blue and maybe some more lighter blue um, I'm just going for it. I'm not sure how well this is going to work, but we, we're just going to go in here. You don't want it to dry too much and I'm going to do a little bit more dark in there. Okay. So now we're going to get our saran wrap and we're just going to like crunch it in there. Okay. We're going to get it in there, crunch it in there. This is an idea that I was going to do on one of the challenges and then I never had time. So we're just doing it now and we're gonna see if it's gonna work. And this thing, you have to let it dry for a bit. So I'll do my other ones while this dries. So that's pretty good. I think it might end up being a little bit light, but that's okay. So let's do blues there. And then on the other side, no audio here. You don't have audio? That's strange. Wait, let me just write something down. Uh, 
for Mirta. You can't hear me. There we go. Poor Mirta. I can't type and talk at the same time and paint. Okay, so if anybody wants to chat with Mirta, you can just chat in the in the chat box because I don't think she can hear me. That's too bad. So now I want to do a contrasting color on the other side. So I'm wondering, maybe I should stick in the yellows or something and oranges, maybe yellows and oranges. Okay, let's try that. So I'm gonna probably should wash my water too, but I'll wash my water after. So I'm gonna just do a bunch of yellow. Ooh, okay. Yeah, this brush is really cheap. It's losing its it's losing its uh, color. Well, I don't even know what I'm doing here. I'm just playing around. Let's do some reds. There we go. And maybe some ochres. There we go. Okay. This is psychedelic, but we're gonna see if it's gonna work. So I'm gonna just do a bunch of colors and we're going to see how well this is going to work and I'm just kind of plopping them around. This is, I don't usually do this type of like this, like this. And so what I want to do now is to add texture to this one. I'm going to a little more yellow and you got to work fast. Connie's here. Yay. You can chat with Mirta because she, uh, I don't think she has audio. So now I'm going to get some salt on this one just to see the, the technique. So we're gonna do a little bit of salt on this one just to give it a little bit of texture. You can use coarse salt and you can use this salt. So we've got those. Now we have the space in the middle. So why don't we do something else in the middle and then I'm gonna let all of this dry. So if we wanna do some other things in the middle, maybe we can go with some more blues or something. We, I mean, we just did blues, but I think I'm going to, you know what I'm going to do for this one? I'm just going to do blues again, but I'm going to use a different texture. So we're just going to go in here. I don't know why that got a splotch of orange. I'm just going to take that up. Yeah. So we're just going to, and then I'm going to clean my brush. Uh, Stumbled on this awesome. I did I did post in the group, but I'm pretty sure not many people saw it that I'm gonna be live today because sometimes I do an extra an extra video for the 10 day challenges and I thought well they, they do take a long time to to make and to edit so I said well why don't I just go live so that's what I'm doing right now I'm just going live so now I'm just going to Put a bunch of these on here. I, my paints are a little bit watery, but that's okay. I'm just gonna go in here and maybe put some other brighter. Yeah, this brush is losing its bristles. So note to self, don't use this brush with this project. I don't know what the heck that is. Gosh, it's like a worm. Okay, so now I'm gonna get my alcohol and just do some drops. So remember this alcohol does does that type of thing, but I think my I think my um paint is too watery. So it's a very fine line about what you can do with the paint. And so now I'm going to be more careful with my next one not to do it so watery. So this is this is cool. See it gives a nice technique, a nice uh, textures. They look like little amoebas or something. So I love that. So what I'm going to do is now I am going to clean my water and I'm going to, yay, <laughs> abstract flag, a flag. Hmm. So let's leave this. I'm going to dry it a little bit and then I'm going to, I am going to start another one and hopefully this will dry so I can do what I want to do with it which is sort of the idea behind this project, what we're going to see. So let me just, sorry for the noise. I'm just going to dry this a little bit. And then I don't want to melt the plastic. I'm going to be careful. I'm going to put it at the side and do something else after. So we'll just let that go. And I'm just going to turn this off. I actually might ask Mimi or Mark to dry it. 
and I'm going to put this at the side and get my other one that I set up here. So what I did with those is I tore them and then I and then I separated them. I'm actually gonna Mimi. Do you mind to do me a huge favor to blow dry this? Um, just, I guess be careful with the plastic because it has to stay on. So maybe don't blow dry it directly, but blow dry those ones. And then that hopefully will dry at the same time. Thank you. There's no rush because I'm going to work on another one in between time. Okay. So I'm back. I'm gonna. I have some fresh water. What? This is not working. Why? It's going everywhere. Oh, okay. Bring it to me. Yeah, I'll try to keep the heat thing. Okay, so now, okay, so the blow dryer didn't work. We're just gonna try these ones. Hi, Amber, how you doing? Amber, I'm doing an improvised live stream because normally I do an extra day for the 10 day challenge and I didn't film a video, so I thought I'd do it live. So now these are the ones that I ripped the uh, paper and then I taped them down and we're going to do different bookmarks in here. So I'm gonna use all the techniques again. So I have the alcohol here. I have the saran wrap here. And I'm going to do the fish one, but I'll probably have to do the fish in acrylic because I'm gonna just do the background. So uh, I might not do the fish today, we're gonna see, but I'm going to do the effect with the sort of underwater scene which I do have a tutorial for that already, but I thought it would be nice to do it as a bookmark. So we're gonna do that. And then the other ones I did, I'm letting them dry a bit. I'm probably gonna have to go in with the heat gun and uh, dry them again, but um, the blow dryer didn't work too well, but that's okay. So let's go ahead and do this one. So I'm gonna start with the water. And what I do for that, I wanna get my alcohol all ready here. And I am going to get, I like to get like a little bit of yellow. Don't want too much, but I also don't want to get too much water. My first, my abstract one's got a little watery. So we're just going to do a little bit of the yellow. That might be too much actually. So then some, some a little bit of this one. That's not the nicest blue in the world. This one's nicer, but I have to, I think I have to get more blue, I need more blue paint. So we're gonna do this. And I might've put too much, I might've put too much um, of the yellow, but we're gonna see. And then there's a nice kind of darker blue and you do want to, you do want to um, cover all the, all the um, white paper, so. And then here, I do like kind of a, a thing like that because we're going to end up, okay, I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna, maybe this one too, that's a nice blue. So I'm gonna get little darker blues here. And then from here, you wanna work quickly because if you wanna do the alcohol, the paper, it can't be too dry. It also can't be too wet. So that's the idea is we're gonna put bubbles in there and I have done this in previous tutorials. So we're gonna go with that. It got a little bit watery, I think. Anyways, we're gonna do our best with this. And then after I'll put a fish in there. So that's the idea of that one. Put that at the side. And then down here, we are going to do the saran wrap technique. So we're gonna do the ocean, the bottom of the ocean there. So now we are going to get 
some different like the ochres i always put like some ochre on there so we're going to put some ochre and usually what i do for this is i just like randomly put the colors around so get some this is like a burnt umber type of thing or burnt sienna i think that one is there we go and then we can have this one which is a burnt umber and I'm just going to like just separately I probably should let that dry first it's going to bleed a little bit and then we're going to get some of the is that green no let's get this green over here get some green there we go right there I'm just putting blobs of color and then some reddish so Maybe not too much red, just a little bit. Okay, and maybe a little bit more of, oops, where's the dark one? This one's pretty dark, let's do that one. So there and there, and there we go. So the idea behind this, even if there's a couple of white little pieces, it's okay. So now you get your saran wrap and you wanna crunch it in. So we're gonna put this here start by crunching it in a little bit and then we're just going to the piece is a little big we're going to put this here and we're going to blend it crunch it in and there so there so we're going to crunch that in and then we have to leave that we have to leave that for a little bit so let's just leave that there and then over here we can do some other techniques so let's go ahead and do some more techniques here I did 30 of them for my clients. Yes, with the, yeah, you, I, I mentioned earlier before you hopped on, Amber, that uh, you really love that saran wrap technique. I think that's awesome. So let's do it again. We're gonna do one that's all saran wrap and more like the, the way that uh, Amber was doing hers. And then what I love to do is go in after and find forms and images in the saran wrap. So the classic colors I like to use for that are this beautiful kind of magenta color. You don't want it too saturated, but you also don't want it too watery. It's a very, very fine line when you're doing these, like how to get enough water and how to get enough pigment. So let's just slap down that paint, okay? So we're gonna get, this is the paint's gray on here we're just going to go right in there and then i kind of like the idea of, doing, idea of doing a little purple and what color i don't want to get too many colors that's the thing i want to keep it somewhat simple but you also like you have to work very very fast maybe another blue i like this blue we can go in with that blue and i want to go in and fill in the whole the whole space because you don't really want these white bits showing so I'm just gonna go in with a little more it looks kind of looks like tie-dye so we're gonna go in here and it's sometimes it is slightly hit and miss you don't you don't always know how it's gonna turn out so we're gonna go like that so it looks pretty good and then now we're gonna get our saran wrap that's why you want to have your saran wrap ready and we're just going to crunch it down so crunch it down pull it in a little bit crunch 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 try not to smudge the colors too much and that should be good so now we have to also leave that because we're going to go into it after when it's dry so we have those ones which are super cool but let me flip this around so I can access this one a little bit more. These ones will be upside down. So let me have a good little sip of water. And then another technique I like to do with the, with the um, watercolor with this type is these very earthy colors. And this one was actually inspired by a painting. I'm actually gonna grab it, it's on my wall done by my dad's aunt. So I guess that would be my great aunt, Sheila. She lived out on the West Coast. She's no longer living. Um, and her 
daughter had a house on Galliano Island, which is, and then I went to visit them and Sheila, my aunt gave me, my great aunt gave me this beautiful, beautiful painting. She did a lot of more realistic things in her younger years. And then in her older years, she made these very beautiful abstract paintings. So this was done in 1989 and I cherish it. It really has inspired me with my watercolor painting. So I am going to do one in that genre of the, the very blobby and earthy colors. Gorgeous, eh? Gorgeous. Yeah, she was such an amazing woman. And I have a lot of artists in my family, so um, I'm very blessed. So let's go ahead and get some earthy colors for that one. We're gonna get some like greens and stuff. So we can just go ahead and do like, often I'll do them like very vertically, but I'm gonna do, try to do a more like blobby, blobbiness now. So, and then we have other green that we can use. Put the, put a little bit at the side if you're not sure about the color, or if you wanna to tone it down, or if you wanna do, you know, other things. I'm thinking I might be, might not be that success successful, but we're gonna try it. So I also like to do the panes gray when I do these ones. So we can just like get some, I'm probably gonna redo this one. It's not quite turning out how I thought, but we're gonna just like go in. That one got a little money too, so. But that's what happens with watercolor. You don't always know what's going to, how it's gonna turn out, but you just have to kind of go with it. So I'm just gonna go around. Sometimes I go in with the, with the water and then you can kind of bleed it out as well. So there's lots of things you can do. The other thing you can do is get a spray bottle to spray the colors around a bit. I'm actually gonna fill up my, I think I had a spray bottle here. Let me just fill it up with water because that's another technique that you can use. I'm just not sure if I brought my spray bottle or if I dropped it. Let me just see. I think I might have dropped it. Let me just go look. Uh, hmm. dropped it. I had a spray bottle with water, but now I can't find it. So we are just going to make do with what we have. So yeah, I'm not super happy with the way this one's turning out, but I'm going to go ahead and oops, didn't mean to do that. Do another one after. So I'm just going to go in with this and see and just play around with it. I do like the earthy colors. You can go in too with your paper towel if you want to lift color up there's that's always a possibility to lift up color and stuff and actually that creates an interesting texture when you do that type of thing so sometimes you just have to play with it uh, you don't want to like get too muddy with it either but there are definitely some interesting things that you can do and go in if you want to go in a bit with some more water you can go in a bit and then we can let it dry and then maybe put some some um, trees or something on top. So let's just let's just leave that one right now. I don't want to overdo it. I'm actually taking a abstract painting class with my friend Serena right now and we're learning all about composition and stuff. So that's that's one. Uh what do you say? Daddy will love this one. Camo. It's a wonderful painting. Thank you. Uh, Marilee, hi, how are you? Nice to see uh, people uh, hop on. So yeah, if anybody's watching and wants to say hello, please say hello. Uh, so now I'm gonna do another, the other way you can do it is it's called, another technique is called wet on wet. So on the wet on wet, you would actually wet your paper first. If I had that spray bottle, I could spray it, but of course I can't find that spray bottle because I think I dropped it on the floor. So if you do a wet on wet, so if you put the, the um, water down first and then you just go in with your 
paint, you'll see you, you get a much different kind of bleedy technique than than the um, than if you don't put the water first. So that's I think I prefer like working on dry, but that's just to show you like the difference. And then if I want to put some of these, one of the ways I do this this particular uh, type of design is I just do horizontal lines like that. So that's definitely another way that you can do it. What other colors did I use? Sort of this, whoops, let's get the green. So I'm gonna get the green, I'm gonna bring it up here. And if you wanna tone it down, you can just add a teeny, wit, teeny, teeny bit of an opposite color and that'll just tone it down a little bit. So, and I'm gonna just go in here. Maybe I need more pigment in there. So you can go and you see it does more of a like a bleeding kind of soft foggy type of technique when you work on the wet first and I'm going to do that and then we can do some of this yeah I definitely need to practice on this type of technique I'm going to actually look a little close closer at my aunt's piece because I I never really looked at it closely. I just thought it was beautiful and I kind of did my own thing with it, but she really has a very spontaneous way about it that I really love. So I think I would like to explore that one a little bit more and see. So now I'm gonna put some more brown in there, but you'll see with the wet on wet, it definitely makes some interesting types of bleeding patterns and stuff, so, and I mean, like, look at that. Look at that, the way it sprays up like that. It's so beautiful. And then you can actually clean your brush. And if you want to go in with a little bit more water to make it bleed. Yeah, there's all kinds of fun stuff you can do with watercolors. Yeah, so I'm just going to clean my brush in between, go in and see what other types of things I can do. This is... Um, that there's that girl that I followed a couple of her challenger uh, challenges called Colby um, Bloom. Colby Bloom's her name. It's her channel is called this writing desk or the writing desk, and she calls it a thirsty brush. So you dry your brush, and it actually will lift off some of the color. She's she's amazing. I'll link up her stuff in the description below because she's very inspiring and she's a very good teacher, and she has some really fun projects. So then you could go like that. So then again, you can, I'm not gonna touch that a little bit because it's so beautiful, but you can go in a little bit and remove some color if you like, you know, depending on what you want to do. So I've pretty well done a lot here. And also for this one, if you could see on, whoops, my aunt's piece, she's taken a tiny brush, almost like a, Oh, like a super fine brush there to do some trees. So let's see if we can do something like that. I'm going to see if I have a really fine brush. Colby's amazing. Yeah, she's fine. I bought a couple of her uh, courses just to support her. I really, really, she gives a lot of free content, but she also has courses available for purchase. She's very, very amazing. I'd love to meet her one day. Yeah, she's a very sweet girl. So now here is some, if I have like a little brush with this. I'm just not even sure how she did this, but I'm just going to try. See, this isn't even that fine. I think I need a finer brush and then just kind of like very kind of abstracted trees type of thing. Uh, where's my brown? I should have brought that up here a little bit. Um, like that. Like that, and then some more. I'm just gonna turn this down a little bit. There we go. I'm gonna do some more here. And maybe another little one here. It's always good to have like kind of a uneven amount of trees too. So I'm just like doing a wiggly, wiggly tree thing. And then maybe we'll do another one or I'm not sure where even I want to do this one. You have to look at the composition and see where you think things should go. I kind of feel like I should do something up here. Okay. Yeah, it's just uh, all about the space.
nigger space and stuff. So I don't know if that works, but it's interesting. I, I think there's a lot you can do with this. You can go around here. I don't know if they really look like trees, but this is the first time I've tried this type of technique with the trees like this with the um, on the large abstract piece. So I think I'm just going to play with it a little bit and just see what it does. I don't want to overdo the trees either. So there's always that aspect to it. But it's also nice to have a little bit of contrast of lights and dark. So you can go in with a darker, after you've done one layer of light, you can go in with a darker and just kind of go in there. And it's kind of cool when it bleeds a little bit too. I'm just gonna just bring this one over a little bit. Okay, I think I'm just gonna stop. This is not exactly what I expected. So and you can go in and remove some of this stuff too. So it really, there's no real rules to these things. If you don't like it, just, you know, you can go in and pick it up a little bit and stuff. So there's, cause sometimes like if it's too solid there, it's nice to lift up some color and just to give it a little bit of variety. Like, so your eye can move in and out. So that's pretty good. So now what I have to do is somehow dry these things because otherwise, aw, thank you. Uh, if we don't dry them, I'm not gonna be able to do what I wanted to do with these. So I think I'm gonna stop the painting aspect of it now. Let me remove that. And I'm going to remove these. And I'm gonna bring the other ones back. I'm gonna let these ones dry a little bit. And I'm gonna bring these ones back and I'm going to try to dry it because otherwise I won't be able to finish this project. So if you guys want to take a little break and turn off your sound and I'm going to just go to dry this for a bit. So let's do that. Actually, I'm realizing this is gonna take a while. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna sign off and then I'll come back in about 20 minutes and finish it off. So let me flip the screen. Yeah. So I'm gonna sign off for now. I'm gonna let these dry and then I'm gonna hop back on another live in about half an hour. So uh, just to finish it off and to show you guys what I mean. So uh, sorry about that leg at the end, but I will uh, get back to it. How do you like my shirt, by the way? This is my merch for my comic shop. So I have a bunch of people that have bought them and are sending me photos. So as you can see, I have a quirky sense of humor. So anyways, guys, have a great uh, lunch if you're going to have lunch and I'll hop back on in about half an hour. Bye.